Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Battling and Beating Cancer here on CanTV21. No, this is not a monster across your screen. It's Scott Seaman, your co-host and co-founder of the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation. And this is not Charlene McMahon, our co-host and other co-founder. This is Dr. Vino Gopal of Rush University Medical Center, and he's our special guest. And we're going to be talking tonight about leukemia, signs and symptoms and treatments, everything that you wanted to know about leukemia. And we'll get to that in just a couple of moments. But if you have any questions, get online, 312 37 uh, 738-1060. 738-1060. We will take your calls tonight as we do all the time because the program is really all about battling and beating cancer and doing all the things that we need to do as patients, as survivors, as caregivers, or people yet who don't even have cancer. Because when one out of two men in America and more than one out of three women in America will hear the scariest words you can ever hear, you've got cancer at some point in their lifetime. Cancer is something that we all will deal with in one shape or form. And now more than ever, people are surviving and beating the disease. And we need to make sure that there are better treatments out there so that when other people get diagnosed or when they have a recurrence or a remission and they're waiting uh, for the next treatment, that we've got that coming along. And I have to say, the government has invested about $100 billion in the fight against cancer since uh, the early 1970s, and private parties probably double that amount. But $300 billion, when you're talking about cancer, which is really more than a couple hundred diseases and many other subtypes, is not a heck of a lot of money. So while we've made some progress, if you compare the progress made in cancer versus the progress made in heart disease over the past 30 years, cancer progress just doesn't measure up. But the good news is, in the last six or eight years, we've made tremendous progress, and the vast majority of that progress has been through the investment in blood cancer research, which is why we say that blood cancer research is the superhighway to curing cancer. Uh, Charlene is out on assignment tonight, so we'll have to do our best to make it through without her, and she'll be uh, looking at the show, I'm sure, to critique it and point out everything that I say that might be less than 100% accurate, but you folks will stick up for me because you know we're bringing you the best information that we possibly can. Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation is who we are. We are a nonprofit committed to curing lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma, and we use the main weapons we have in the fight against cancer, knowledge, awareness, and raising money for research and for better treatments, and ultimately the cure. And we invite you to contact us and to join with us here on the Superhighway to Curing Cancer if you have any questions or if you or somebody that you love is impacted by blood cancer, www.chicagobloodcancer.org is the website, 888-792-9992 is the phone number. And so through the magic, you may realize that this is September 1st, and I don't know if that has any particular meaning to you folks other than summer is drawing to an end, but it is the beginning of uh, Blood Cancer Awareness Month, and September 15th is Worldwide Lymphoma Awareness Day, and awareness is important because it's really that first step that people know the signs and the symptoms so they get diagnosed and treated as soon as possible, and so that people understand the importance of battling cancer and the steps that we need to take to win that war. And we're going to skip our Cures to Curing Cancer, Keys to Curing Cancer segment for today so we can get right into the wonderful subject of leukemia. Uh, and before we do that, just very briefly, let's talk about something that's happening one week from Sunday. It's right around the corner. Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation's Out for Blood team is participating in the North Shore Bike ride on Sunday, September 12th. You can ride all sorts of routes, 20 miles, 50 miles, 62, 70, or 100 miles if you want to do the whole century. And if you want to ride a mile or two, that's fine too. And if you don't want to ride but just want to participate by forming a virtual vampire team online and contributing to the cause, that's terrific. Those who raise $100 get a magnificent Out for Blood t-shirt. Those who raise $350 also get the coveted Out for Blood bike jersey. 
And again, if you go to chicagobloodcancer.org, you can register and get all of the information or call 888-792-9992. But the time to act is now and uh, start uh, putting your team together and making a difference. Let's all pedal to cure lymphoma, leukemia, myeloma uh, on Sunday, September 12th, www.chicagobloodcancer.org. And now you've been looking at him for the last five minutes and 20 seconds, and now we're actually going to get to talk to Donner, Dr. Vino Gopal of Rush University Medical Center and his patients, and I think even his wife call him Dr. Vino. So that's what we're going to do here tonight. He is the uh, Associate Director of the Sections of Hematology and Stem Cell Transplantation at Rush University Medical Center. He is actively involved both in treating patients and in research for lymphoma and leukemia. And doctor, welcome to Battling and Beating Cancer. Thank you, thank you, Scott, for having me here. So we talk about all these words that nobody can spell and some people don't even know our cancer. We've had another show on lymphoma. Tonight we talk about leukemia, which is the second major form of blood cancer, and it is the number one killer among cancers in children. And doctor, if you could just start out by telling us what is leukemia? As you know, blood has different cells in it, and uh, mainly there is a white cell, red blood cell, and platelets. These are the three main cells in the blood. And uh, leukemia is the term we use for a cancer that affects the white blood cells. There are three types mainly, but um, I think I would uh, make it simple. Acute leukemia and chronic leukemia, that is one way to look at different types of leukemia. Acute leukemia grows very fast, whereas chronic leukemias grow very slowly. There are two types of acute leukemias. One is the acute myeloid leukemia and uh, two, acute lymphatic leukemia. Chronic leukemias, there are two types again to make it simple, chronic myeloid leukemia and uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So a lot of words for four basic types of leukemia. And let's just start out with some of the basics. Uh, what are some of the signs and symptoms that people should look for uh, for leukemia? In general, uh, most patients with acute leukemia would come to the physician because of maybe symptoms of anemia, like tiredness, fatigue. They can do their usual work they have been doing for uh, the past you know, several years. Suddenly they noticed a change in their ability to function that's one way to present to the doctor. The other common way by which an acute leukemic patient comes to the physician is bleeding. They can have bleeding from nose, bleeding from the gums, or they some blood in the stools. Because, as, as I mentioned, these are diseases of the white cells where the white cells fill up the bone marrow so they don't have enough space to produce red blood cells. That leads to anemia. They don't have enough space in the bone marrow to make platelets, therefore they develop low platelet count which leads to bleeding. So these are the usual symptoms. And uh, in children, sometimes it may present only with pain, bone pain, because as you know, uh, this is a disease that primarily uh, evolves in the bone marrow. And when the bone marrow expands because of increasing number of cancer cells, uh, they can have pain. That would be another common symptom. And what about for some of the other forms of leukemia? Basically the same type of symptoms or? You know, chronic leukemias may come with different symptoms. For example, uh, chronic leukemias grow very slowly, unlike acute leukemias. So sometimes they may not have any symptoms. A typical situation will be uh, the person goes to a physician for a routine annual physical checkup and uh, everything looks fine, no complaints, examination is good, blood looks fine except the white cell count is slightly high. Though typically a general physician would say, well, this needs to be rechecked, why don't you come back after a month? And the patient comes back after a month, the white cell count is still high, and that's when the physician typically would say, well, maybe you should uh, see a hematology doctor, and then the hematology doctor does some blood work and that established as a diagnosis of uh, chronic leukemia. And that's the usual way a chronic lymphatic leukemia patient uh, is diagnosed. 
So the symptoms are different in chronic leukemia compared to acute leukemia. Any difference between CML and CLL? There is difference. Biologically, these are two different types of white cells. CLL is a disease of lymphocytes and CML is a disease of myeloid cells. These are different types of white cells. In terms of how they come to the doctor, yeah, symptoms in CLL, most of the time they are not with any symptoms. Sometimes they can come with symptoms of anemia or fever, night sweats, loss of weight, just like lymphoma. In CML or chronic myeloid leukemia, again, they can be without any symptoms. And if they come with symptoms, you know, it may be symptoms of anemia. And sometimes it can be symptoms in the belly, like abdominal distension. The patient may say, well, you know, I find that for the last few weeks when I eat, my stomach gets full very quickly. That is probably because of a big spleen, because patients with CML can have big spleen. Spleen is an organ on the left side of the abdomen, and that gets enlarged, and that can fill up the abdomen, so they may feel full when they eat. So that's one of the symptoms in CML. And a lot of these symptoms are pretty nonspecific. And, you know, bleeding, anemia could be caused by a variety of things, not necessarily even serious. But if they persist, uh, you need to see your doctor. And I think the other important message of what you're saying in terms of symptoms and diagnosis is that a lot of leukemias and lymphomas are caught not so much by just symptoms, but by getting routine medical testing, getting blood work done when you're supposed to get it done, getting your physical examinations. Is that Absolutely, Scott. I completely agree with you. That also shows it's very important to keep up with your routine physical examination. If your general practitioner physician tells you that you need to come after six months, you should come after six months. There may be a reason why he or she mentioned that, but it's very important to keep up with your routine appointments because that way, if there is a disease like leukemia, that can be diagnosed earlier. And just like in any other cancer, early diagnosis, most of the time makes a difference in the outcome of the patient. 